I'm Raleigh Struss from the Ames Historical Society, interviewing Dean Olson for the Ames Heritage, Ames Historical's Did You Know Project. Uh, would you state your name and when and where you were born, Dean? Well, my name is Bernard Dean Olson, Sr., and I was born in Mary Greeley Hospital, okay. May the 28th, 1934. Okay, you're about the same age I am. And will you uh, give us permission to record this for other use? Yeah, I don't care. Yeah, okay. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we mostly get. Uh, yeah. We'd like to start a little bit with your father. Uh, when did he come to Story County? Well, um, I'd have to... He came to this country when he was 18. Okay. And he... He was supposed to go to school. His father sent him over. He was the eldest of seven children. Okay. Six brothers and one sister. But um, when he got here, he uh, decided he wanted to go to work. Okay. And uh, he came to his uncle's place in Sycamore, Illinois. And that's what the newspaper from 1934 talks about. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's when my uncle passed away. That's okay. his obituary. Okay. But anyway, uh, but it was a Swedish community, mm -hmm. and my father couldn't speak any English. And he was talking to another Swedish fellow there, and he asked him, have you ever been any place where there weren't any Swedish people? Okay. And he said, well, he said, I, I, was, uh, I was on the train, and we stopped in Ames, Iowa. Okay. And he said, uh, I didn't meet any, I didn't see any Swedish people, I didn't hear any, you know. And so my dad got on the train and came to Ames. Okay. Was it always out here uh, near Bloomington, or was it, uh, you had said something about driving your no. livestock across the river once? Well, no, my, my father, when he came here, uh, he wanted to go to work. Yeah. And they were farmers in Sweden, so, he, you know. Sure. Somehow he got people to understand he want, he needed a job. And they told him, somehow, <laughs> that there's a, there was a guy that out, lived north of the college, Iowa State College, okay. on which is Stang Road now, and which is also married student housing, which is on the east side of Stang Road, yes. north, of the, north of the Squaw Creek. And uh, so my dad walked out there, and they told him, he's, you won't last very long because he's, he's a mean man, and he, he, he's a slave driver. And, but my dad stayed, and he, they had a dairy herd, and, and he milked the cows and did the field work, and this was in 80 acres. Okay. And um, for 57 cents a day, and he worked like 14, 16 hours a day. Wow. What, what year was that about? Well, I'd have to figure it out. See, uh, you said he was 18 then? Yeah, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, he could have been 19. His, his birthday was in January. Okay. January 14th. That's, I mean, I'll never okay. forget it. He, my father had quite an accent. A lot of people couldn't understand him. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know he talked anybody different than anybody until I was in my late teens. But that could have been the late 1800s? He would, I think, I think my dad was born in, I think he was born in 1891. He so was been, born then. Then you would have been in the Ames in the early 1900s. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Okay. But anyway, he walked out there, got a job and, and stayed. And then Mr. Couser, this is the man's name was Sam Couser. Mm -hmm. Mr. Couser passed away, and Mrs. Couser married a fellow by the name of Campbell. I can't remember his first name, and he passed away too before I can remember. But she was like my grandmother, Miss Helen Campbell was her name. Okay. And um, so for many years we farmed that farm, or Dad did. And at one time or another, except for the Walter Groves farm and the Taylor farm, my father farmed on both sides of 24th Street, what is now 24th Street. Okay. All, all the little farms, you know, he farmed uh, not all at once, but at different times. And, he, and then he finally, 
they moved to what is the Morris place, which Neva Morris. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, Neva was a really good friend of my father. With, other than they, also I mean, was a landlord. And that Taylor farm was that on the north side of Twenty Fourth, where the right. Taylor still lives. <laughs> Well, a descendant of Taylor's and where Stang Road came up north to 24th Street, what is 24th now? Right. That that was the a T intersection. Farm. The Taylors lived right there. The great big old white barn on the property. The, it was a big house. A big the, house. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ben Taylor was his name. Mm -hmm. he, he was a big man. I remember he used to have a huge dog, a, a Newfoundland, oh, and yeah. I loved that dog. But, Dad and him were good friends, and we, you know, I'd go over there. But it, anyway, so my father took care of Mrs. Campbell and uh, the farm, mm -hmm. besides farming all this other farm. Well, when they were living at the Morris Place in the big house, now this was an older, but it was the big house, mm -hmm. what they called the big house, they had a fire and burnt. It lost oh. everything. Okay. But they moved into, there was a, a tenant house there, and they moved into that and continued for a while on the farm. And then uh, I think that Edwards wanted to come back to the farm. So Dad found out that where we live now, where mm -hmm. I live now, was for sale. And so the guy's name was Niles. Doctor, he was a doctor, Dr. Niles um, owned it, and I don't know, they got together, and Dad moved there in uh, spring of 33, uh, the 1st of March, and they brought all the, all the livestock, the chickens, the turkeys, and the pigs, they had to haul up 69 and around this way. Okay. And then... Um, the horses and the milk cows and the beef cattle, they drove them down east on 24th Street, right across, and uh, there was a lane that used to go through Walter Grove's place yes. back in, mm -hmm. and went down to the river, and there there was a ford at the river where you could get across real easy, and they, they went across there and across Walter Grove's ground and then onto our ground, which is you know our, was our original farm. Okay, well that kind of shows up on this map of Franklin Township that I had from 1902, that area and stuff. So I might insert a picture of this map into this conversation and then we can go on from there. Okay, and that plot back then was marked Secret Olson, so that's still that same farm. Yeah, okay. Okay, but you you lived there all your life then? Walked out of the same door. The doors are the same on that house. <laughs> okay, okay. So it's um, from 1934 on, and the Bloomington School was quite right north of your house then? No. No, it was north east, more east than north. Okay. Yeah, uh, because, you know, you go up to the Bloomington Road, upstage yeah. go up to Bloomington and go straight east to the... Right, yeah. To okay. the corner, okay. the northeast corner of the farm. Okay. And that's what's called Old Bloomington now. Yeah. Well, they... You <laughs> see, the reason they did that, Bloomington Road was go, supposed to go across the bottom. They were going to put that road across. So behind the old auction house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, well, in fact, you see, when my father sold that three quarters an acre to a fellow where Dean lives, yeah, to a fellow named Val Blackburn. He had a sheet metal business here in Ames. And how he talked my father into selling it, I don't know. But could that? <laughs> but the stipulation was that he didn't buy. To the fence. Oh, okay. Dad kept 75 feet south, yeah. and then starts the lot because that he figured 75 feet on his side and 75 feet on which would have been I don't know if that was Arnold's then or McKinley's or 
but that would have been the right of way for Bloomington Road to go straight on west. Yeah, to go down. Yeah, it would have, it would have caught cut off the Osborne Forty, what we called yeah. our Osborne yeah. Forty. Okay, okay. Dad didn't like it, but he figured the road was coming through, and so well, a long time ago, that's that was their plan. Now you said that uh, the chickens and the eggs and so on, you came down this way. That's down Riverside Road, and then went down to your farm. Mm -hmm. And that was, was that's how way they moved it. Okay, was Thirteenth Street through or through Street back then? Oh yeah, it was. Yeah. was uh, In fact, uh, at the at the bottom of, of Stagecoach Road and Thirteenth Street, mm -hmm. there used to be a. I, I don't know whatever happened to it. I I know somebody's got pictures of it, but there was a sign on a pole, mm -hmm. and it said. Uh, this was Stagecoach Road going okay. to Bloomington. Okay. It told a little bit about where it went. And I, it went on, like to Marshalltown, on, on, but it, it, it went on to, to Dubuque, you know. Oh, okay. okay. That Stagecoach Road went that far. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a main line. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, got its name from being an old Stagecoach path, huh? Yes, until it gets to my, just east of my house. Yes. But from there on, that never was a stage. It might have been an old trail, a wagon trail, or, you know, mm -hmm. of course it was, you know. Sure. They, many years ago, when, the, when it first came, and you could still see it, the S-curve, that S-curve just went like this, and now that, you know, it comes like this, but it originally, it's like, and you can still see okay. where they brought the road to make a, a softer S in there then. Well, when you would go into town to Ames on 13th Street, was that bridge over the river? Covered. It, not covered, but it was a steel. Right, okay. Uh, okay. Steel span mm -hmm. bridge, yeah. That bridge is still standing. Oh, is that up here north by uh, Soper's Mill? That's right. Diagonal bridge. That's okay. what we call diagonal bridge. That's the old 13th Street Bridge. Is that right? That's yeah. now up by Soper's Mill. Okay. Right. Okay. That one was getting really deteriorated or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they moved that thing. Okay. And Riverside Road also had a steel bridge on it across the river, didn't it? It, uh, at one time, yeah. and then... It was then, still there when we moved down here, yeah. Yeah, well, and then they built, they built a, they didn't have any steels. Uh, you know they had, yeah. And but and then they built another one after you know. Then Which now they is, built this one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I have a lot of the timbers, and the two fours. They were just two by fours, laying on edge. On edge. Yeah. yeah. Creosote, real heavy creosote. And then there's bridge timbers. I have four by twelves. I have some of those. Story County wanted to know they were going to burn them. And the yeah. boys come and said, Dean, can you use any of that stuff? Said, we'll load it if you can haul it. And I had to tilt that truck. Okay. So I hauled a lot of it home. Good. I've got it. Good for you. It'll last forever. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and then you went to Bloomington School. Did you walk to school? Oh, sure. Okay. In, in the good weather, mm -hmm. you know, um, when my first, and I've got pictures, my brother, came home, he was home on furlough, and uh, he took me to school the first day, my first day at school, and we walked around the road, but, um, and he had his, his mil he had his army clothes on. That would have been in the late 30s then, you said you were 30, five years old? 30, but no, by golly, uh, I started at school in 39. Yeah, 39, right. And my brother, uh, He graduated from Ames High when he was 15. Yeah. Started Iowa State when he was 15. Okay. And when he was 17, he lied about his age and joined the National Guard. Okay. okay. Over at Boone, Red Bull Division. Yep, yep. Well, right after that, they took him into World War II. Yeah, right. Okay. And uh, when I was seven years old, Dad and I went to Camp Dix. New Jersey. Okay. 
My brother was going to ship to Europe. He was on okay. his way to Europe. Yep. So dad wanted to see him before he left. But anyway, so, and I went, the mother wasn't very, well, we had, we had a person with her all the time, but, yes. but anyway, uh, so dad and I went, and I stayed at the camp with my brother. I could how, slept how did, with... How did you get to New Jersey? Train. To train. train. Oh okay. yeah, we always went to the train. Okay. But while we, then we went into New York City. Okay. And while we were, I don't know whether it was just before we got there, or while we were there, but it was probably just before we got there because we weren't there very long. But we went up on the Empire State Building. Oh, sure. And in the harbor, you could see the harbor. Mm -hmm. The ship that my brother was to go to Europe on, transport ship, you know, yeah. burned. I can't remember the name of that ship. But anyway, it burned and rolled over right in the harbor. And it looked to me like a, an old dead catfish, great big one, you know, but <laughs> I, I can visualize, I was scared to death. That was the yeah. hope, hope your brother wasn't on it. No, no, but he, <laughs> they had to, you know, they had to get another ship, right. and so right. he didn't go immediately then. So we, we did spend a few days there, but... Was the Statue of Liberty there then? Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. that's right, it was built earlier, yeah, okay. Uh, my, my father told me about coming through Ellis Island. Yeah, okay. And uh, he he was mad about it because the way they treated a lot yeah. of the people. Mm -hmm. they, it was like sorting cattle. They had different pens, actual pens. Yeah, yeah. And, and if you didn't look right or you acted, you were sick or something, you got run off to a different pen. <laughs> and a lot of people, they... But shipped them back. They didn't. Yeah, deported them. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But dad, you know, dad was okay. But he got mad about that. He okay. he didn't like that at all. You know. So you started in the Bloomington school then, and uh, often in good weather walked to school. Did your father have a car then also? Oh yeah, we had no. I don't know whether it was a Dodge or a Plymouth, but yeah, we had no. Okay. But um, if the if the road, if, if the weather was good, I just cut up through the timber. Sure. I just cut right through the timber. I went up over the hill, past the old cabin, and which was gone then. There were a few logs left laying around, but we went right on to the, to the schoolhouse. My, and I, my dog took me to school and came and got me and knew exactly what time. Okay, well you just talked about a cabin and stuff. I think this article that we were talking about the other day, uh, Probably is that same cabin oh, that was is. on your dad's farm. Yeah. And I want to show some pictures that you just showed where it's rebuilt in Missouri Valley and insert them here. So we'll stop here right now and then I'll pick up again. Was there a cemetery that the uh, people that lived in Bloomington uh, used, affiliated with that church or anything? Yes, um, but not very many. Not I, I don't I, I don't understand why it wasn't a bigger cemetery. But there aren't there aren't a lot of people buried at the. Okay, but it's, it still exists. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. And in okay. fact, a few years ago they cleaned it up. Now I haven't been over there for many years, so I don't know if it's still or not, but. It was, uh, it's on the Max Bailey farm. Oh, so that was east of Bloomington and over toward what is now the Animal Disease Lab. Right, right across the road. Okay, well Amy Yoakum from the county uh, kind of got involved with the cleaning up of that cemetery, yeah. Yeah, that was, that was nice. Yeah. Some very, very old, oh, yeah. uh, I call them limestone tombstones and everything, yeah. Yeah, soft, you can hardly read them. I mean, yeah. you got to... Well, you could chalk them, but they, uh, yeah, they were real old when I was little. Yeah, the only access now was through Bailey's farm yes. there to get there. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I don't. Uh, I imagine that's gonna. They're gonna have to preserve a, a right away there because I, uh, the Bailey farm is being sold gradually more all the time. Okay, and 
you went to the sixth grade? Fifth at, grade. Fifth grade at Bloomington School. Mm -hmm. Did you go on then in Ames or what? Yeah, when they closed the school, um, I was the I was the north. Everybody north of me either went to Gilbert, okay, or they or they went to Milford. It, yeah, Dayton Avenue was the dividing line. Right. Um, but so sixth grade, I went to Beardshire in Ames. Okay. Well, we've got a, a relic that you gave us a, a report card from Bloomington School. And I'll try to insert that here so they get an idea of the many different subjects that you uh, were taught at the Bloomington School and then to prove that you were promoted to the fourth grade there at that. Okay, we're back on again, and I'll insert that picture so they can see the, the variety. You had a pretty broad uh, education, and that was all eight grades were in the same school. Right? Yeah, okay. and that school, uh, I was going to uh, measure the, 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 how big the room was. I mean, by the foundation of the school, sure. it wasn't very big, but it's bigger than... Um, the house, the the school down in Meeker, it was bigger okay. than that, okay. but not a lot. Yeah, it about almost the, you know the same thing. Yeah, well, I have a few pictures of the classes sitting on the uh, the front steps of, of Bloomington School here, which would give people an idea of what it looked like. Uh, we looked at them the but other day. When I went to school there, they had added a cloakroom on the south. That's the. This would be to the south. Okay. And that's the main door, but they would have added a close room <coughs> on the south, and it, the door to it was, you came from the east. Okay. The old concrete steps are still there. Yeah, okay. So the foundation and the steps are still there. Yeah. We know you. You're on? Mm -hmm. Well, okay, we can go on and I'll get some pictures of this class of Bloomington School inserted into this too then. I, I wish I knew the names of all those kids because I would have known quite a few of them yes, as they grew up and if they stayed around, Yeah. which a lot of people did at that time. Well, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Finch that might have gone to Bloomington School. He lived up in here somewhere. He gave us a picture of Coon Station down at the end of the road here at Highway 69. Were you ever in that? <laughs> that? Yeah, a lot, an awful <laughs> lot. Yeah, we, okay. Dad and I used to go down there to eat after Mother yeah. passed away. We ate there, and then we also ate up at Top of Hollow, up on top. Um, was there a filling station Yes. something up there? And it a, was a filling station and a little restaurant combination. Okay. You know, I'm trying to find some pictures of that and see if we can find some pictures of that also. Well, I know who would have them, and that they'd be the Cox girls that run the Suburban yep. out on uh, 69, right uh, east to Gilbert. At the Gilbert Corner, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll see, and right across the road, maybe a little bit north, was the Casey Motel. Land. Right, right. Now, how long ago did that Casey Motel get started? Oh. I don't, I, it, it had to have been in the late 40s, 50s. Okay, okay. Because that's when, you know, I don't remember exactly when they did change the road, 69, mm -hmm. but that, that killed this gas station that was, yeah. and the little restaurant. And I think it was in the 30s sometime when they rerouted Highway 69, and that was before the, uh, the lake and the gravel pitch were there, I think. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, that was a marsh area back in there. Uh, but uh, they didn't they didn't reroute that that sixty nine in the fifties. Well, oh, okay, okay. I wasn't yeah. here, so you would know better. Yeah, well, I but yeah, it, and it was a dangerous road. It was narrow, and it had curbs on the side. And, yep. Yep. and uh, if you run up on that curb, it'd throw you sometime over the next. Yeah. But it was 
They were made for Model Ts and As, you know. Well, about what time did the gravel pits get started there then, and what you said was such a marshy area? Oh, I don't really, <coughs> I don't really remember. It had been in the 50s, late 50s probably. Okay, because I think the Jensen's farmed some of that property. Yeah, they own, yeah, Hogger yeah. Jensen owns some yes. of it, yeah. yeah Hogger, and yeah. they said how marshy that land was. It, good thing they turned it into a lake, and, and yeah. now it's a beautiful lake for yeah. the city of Ames. And, I remember when they brought the big uh, backhoe. The drag line, yeah. Yes, and it was an enormous thing. They put it, it took a long time to put it together, but it was huge. Yeah. Well, the, the motor was two stories high and yes, everything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, Dad and I used to go over there and sit and watch it uh, work. Mm -hmm. It was unreal. Yeah, that was a mighty big machine. Oh, it, at that time. It yeah, was, Ames Historical has a little bit of a story on that drag line. Uh, I think presented by a, a, a younger guy that used to operate the drag line mm -hmm. and how he'd crawl from one story to the next story to get up. The, the engine was so big. And yeah, like they, there was a, they actually, uh, when it was running, it took two guys. Okay. Because one was the uh, oiler, which, you know, he, he, they had to keep the thing lubricated. Yeah. <laughs> I, it was, I wouldn't know how much the thing went, and it actually walked. Yes, it did. We, we, I can remember seeing it walk. Like an old duck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it'd pick up one track and lay it down, and then pick the other one up and lay right. it down and, and yep. so on. Yeah. The walking it, crane. Did you ever go south all the way to what was then uh, Highway 30 as you went into Ames, or was it mostly on 13th Street? Or? Well, you could, to go to Highway 30, you had to, as soon as you got down to 13th Street, you had to go east over to Dayton Avenue, right. and then back south, then you could get to 30. And that, you could cross... Uh, Highway 30 was right on through, going on west through town and everything then, yeah. Yeah, that, Highway 30 was a main, that was the main highway across the United States. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Yep. East to west. And it went right through most, all, every little town, right down Main Street. A lot of times yeah. it went right through Main Street. Well, there was just a picture in the paper here the other day about some mud roads that oh. were on Highway 30. Uh, that would have been before the the concrete roadway got put in, I guess. Well, that that was even before they started gra uh, grading and graveling. Yeah. I mean, uh, that was just around 1900, probably. Yeah. Yeah, my dad. Uh, he told me uh, talked about them building Highway 69 North out of Ames, mm -hmm. Grand Avenue. And they needed men and they needed horses, bad. Okay. And uh, my dad had a lot of real nice, uh, real good draft horses. So he, he took a team and went over and he lasted a half a day. And he said, I'll come back and work, but not my horses. Uh -huh. You're not, te you're not um, treating my horses like that okay. at all. He, he couldn't stand it. They worked them so hard. Oh, okay. Okay. But he said he'd come and work, but not not his horses. Not the horses. <laughs> well, he was proud of his horses. Yeah, but I guess way back then they had to use horsepower to grade roads. Oh, and everything. everything. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to understand how you could actually do a lot of the things they did. That's right. <laughs> I mean, uh, with the things we have nowadays, uh, the machines. Uh, it's unbelievable yeah. what they did without them. Yeah. When did you get your first tractor? Uh, Dad bought a um, a case uh, called a CC, and I think he got that in. Uh, I think he got it in '33, the same year that they moved to where I live. Okay. And then in '39, he bought an L case. Big plow tractor. It, right. it, it was big then, but nothing now. But um, and it was on steel. The the CC was on steel too. But Dad converted them both over to rubber. During World War Two, you couldn't find rubber tires. 
but Dad somehow found a set of big tires in uh, South Dakota. Okay. And uh, there was a what they call diesel service, a welding shop in Ames. Yeah. Cut cut the steel wheels, the rims off, and put rims for rubber tires and put those tires on. They're on there today. Okay. They're still on there. Yeah, that was front wheels, the smaller ones on the front mm -hmm. wheels. The it was a wide wheel. front, though, the L was. Now yes. the CC was a narrow front. It was front, a narrow right? front, right. Yeah. And it had the steering arm off to the side of the motor. There, oh, right? yeah, way out. Now when you <laughs> turned it, you had to... It, no, this way. You had to be careful when you turned because that arm would catch on things. Yeah. I've heard of a few people run them into a fence post. <laughs> well, that and, and of course there was no starter on them. You, you cranked it. Yes. And so you had to be careful with that arm sticking out there. It had to be straight or you couldn't crank it. But anyway, that thing would, if it kicked you and threw you, it would, it would tear you up. Yeah. I've heard of somebody that broke their arm cranking it in old CCA. My, my uh, on the OL, once you got it warmed up, uh, after you'd worked it a while, and both of those tractors would start on, on kerosene or okay. fuel oil, but then you could switch it over to gas, uh, or they'd start on gasoline right. and then you could switch it over to fuel oil. Or, right. okay. But Dad always used gasoline. But after it got hot, you didn't want to shut it off. I mean, you just kept going. You feel it took a lot of an awful lot of fuel, but uh, it, it had to cool down before it ever started again. Yeah. Okay. But, I guess that's what they call vapor lock or something. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Probably. And then it wouldn't have near as much compression either. Right. 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 And there, there was always there's two levers on there, especially on the L that. Uh, Retard the spark? Right. Yeah. <laughs> they were all magnetos. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay. Well, that pretty well gets the way uh, this community was. Uh, did you get into Ames to buy groceries? Yes. Saturday night. Was there a grocery store on the north end of town then, or what? No. Uh, not that I remember. Um, or just we a, always went to Abe Medvinsky yes. had a grocery store and it was down on Elm Street, which had been north of Lincoln Way. Yeah. Um, but my father raised fat cattle for Abe Medvinsky for the grocery store. Oh, okay. So we, they were really close. And um, Was that store the one uh, somewhat north of what became the DOT on the south side? Yeah, it'd been straight north of it. Yeah, straight yeah. north of it, right. Okay. Yeah. Did that end up being called the Ames Fruit and Grocery? Yes, it did. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In fact, uh, he had one in Nevada too, and uh, then he built uh, he built the one up on Twenty Fourth Street, right, which, which is a hardware store, which now. is now Ace Hardware. Yeah. And didn't he also build one uh, in Story City? He could have. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, Abe Mazvinsky. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that name. <laughs> Yeah, they had two sons. One Norman, uh, one the oldest one was Norman. The other, the youngest one was Eddie. Okay. I knew Eddie real well, and uh, he got in trouble with his yeah. politics. But but the the farming crowd went in on Saturday night, huh? Yeah, you got your groceries, and then the thing was to do was to park on Main Street because all the stores stayed open. Yeah, that okay. was they stayed open on Saturday night. And you could watch the people walking by. And yeah. What stores were on Main Street back then? Tilden's and uh, Tilden's, yeah, Jameson's, uh, the Fair Store. Yeah, it's the Fair Store. Mm -hmm. There was a uh, Jewish uh, drug store. Yes. There was uh, oh, the drug store that had the fountain in it. Uh, what was the name of that? That was on the south side. Was that the one that became the Obrecht's? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Jim Obrecht's father ran a drugstore downtown. Dixon's. Dixon's, Dixon's Drugstore. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, and then uh, there was also the Rainbow Cafe was on the corner of Kellogg and, and Main Street on the... Yes. On the northeast corner. And yeah. then it was 
right next to that was McGuire's Pipe Shop. And that, McGuire and my father were real good friends. My dad didn't smoke, but he was real good friends with McGuire. That's getting pretty close to where Car Hardware was on the south side, wasn't it? Car Hardware was across the street. Across the street, sure. Yeah, okay. right Same across the side. street. Huh? Oh, right across the street and west of the intersection. Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. And west, Kellogg, I mean. west further yet would have been J.C. Penney's store? Yeah. Um, and then Montgomery go- Wards was clear to the west end of Main Street on the north on side. On the north side, yeah. And then it was Yonkers. And, oh, let's see. What, there was a bunch of little stores there then. Yeah, just for reference, Montgomery Wards is where the flower shop, Everett's flower shop is now, I think. Part of it. Yeah. 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 They had... Uh, they used that building. There was an alley there. Okay. And uh, I can remember Montgomery Wards had a basement in it. Yes, I remember that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and then J. C. Penney had these tracks, wires, and then it, and they pulled a thing. And, and if you bought clothing, yeah. And they put the slip in there and the money change and everything, and then, and then they jerked this thing and it. Shot it up to the office, up in the second floor. They'd make change and send the change back. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and your receipt, yeah. They must have had a barber shop there someplace, too. Oh, there were, it's all, I think there's always been a barber shop in the Sheldon Mud. There was. You know. mm-hmm. That was the hotel on yeah. the corner. And that had a fancy restaurant oh, yeah. in the Sheldon Mud. Yes, there. that was a treat um, when Mother still could, on Sundays, to go there uh, occasionally. Not very often, but occasionally they have dinner. Yeah. Okay, and didn't they have a big dinner and on Christmas time at the Sheldon Mon? I, I don't remember. They probably did. They, they, see, the bus route used to stop on the east side of the Sheldon Mon, which is Kellogg. Yeah, okay. And the Greyhound Bus Depot was right there. Oh, okay. And then on the inside, uh, there was two sets of doors. On the south side was the main, that was the main entrance to Sheldon Mine. You came in the first set of doors and then there was an area maybe 10 feet or so. And then there was another set of doors. And then the, the second set of doors right north of them was the taxi cab stand. Okay. And uh, right in the corner. This is on Kellogg then? Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it was on Main Street. Oh, on Maine, okay. Yeah. The bu- the bus came in on Kellogg. Well, then you have the historic district of old homes in Ames. How far north was Ames developed back there in the 30s? 13th Street. Was that still a gravel road? 13th? Not as I remember. Not until you got to uh, Maxwell Avenue. Okay. And, and when you got past Maxwell, then the... Then the road dropped down, and that was a cinder. That was cinder, cinder, okay. cinder hill, and gravel going east. And Cars Tool was north of Thirteenth Street, then down the hill. Yeah, it. Uh, you went. You went up Duff Avenue. Yeah. And then you, after you got past Fred Logston's dairy farm. Yes. There was a road that went back to to. Uh, Pop cars, and that would have been essentially 16th Street, wouldn't it? Um, About there, yeah. Yeah, probably. Yeah, they was they used to have. Uh, there was a fellow, an old horse trader by the name of Harry Sheehy, had a whole bunch of horses right north of there, and on the street, uh, Fred Logston's dairy farm was on the south side, and then there was a farm, little farm, you know. And Harry she had horses up in there, and then as yeah, so you went on east, you went down to Carspool. Yeah, and I've heard the hospital was built there along 13th Street, about in the early 30s, wasn't it? Yeah, it, when I was born in 34, the hospital uh, must have been pretty new. Yet. Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah it, it really was. I remember uh, mother tell me that. It was really hot in the hospital. 34 was a, a real hot year. Yes. And uh, she told me that she and I had to stay for a week or 10 days in the hospital. That was, that's what you did it then. 
Wow, yeah, yeah. And, but it was real hot in the hospital because, you know, well, it was hot everywhere, but. Yeah, outdoors. <laughs> yeah. And going north on Grand Avenue then, uh, I think the Gabrocks had a farm there on 18th Street, at the Gabrock farm. No. No, that was uh, Bill, uh, Billy Barr. Okay. And Billy Barr was uh, Gibrock's father-in-law. Okay, okay. And he built, uh, Billy gave him the land that was just one great big open area. Yeah. And uh, Joe built the house right about in the center of that thing. Okay, that would be east of Grand Avenue but west of Delph. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. It, it directly east of Grand Avenue. Yes, right, yeah. But then Billy lived right there on the corner. Uh, in a, it, the house is still there. It's sitting at a little bit of an angle. And it had a double driveway that went up, and it, I remember it was a brick driveway, all bricks. And behind his house, there was buildings, and there was, he raised turkeys there, too. Okay. And that driveway, I've got uh, from Ames Historical, an, a picture, an aerial picture of that driveway, and it forms the letter G oh, for really? Gerbrock. And that, they, that was how they marked their house and their farm from the air, so well, you could see the I don't G. remember. I don't remember Joe having a farm. Well, it, maybe not, but open area with that big house. Yeah, well, but I do remember when Billy getting dead. That would, he knew uh, Joe real well. Okay. But, uh, but he was real good friends with Billy, ba Billy Barr. Well, the, the lecture series that Ames Historical is sponsoring down at City Hall next time will be on the Gabrock family. Oh, really? So that might be very interesting yeah, to see. We might see that picture. I, I bought his car. You did? Okay. That he committed suicide. Okay. It was a 1956 Cadillac Fleetwood. Oh, wow. That was a fancy car back it then. It was dark blue and blue interior. It was a beautiful car. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'll bet it was. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah that, was, that was a nice car. And you went to high school in Ames then too? Well, I, I went Beardshire at sixth grade. Yeah. And then what they called Central. I was there at seventh and eighth grade. Okay, yeah. And then in ninth grade... That uh, was near downtown, wasn't it? Well, where First National Bank is. Right, 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 right. Kind of it was a three-story building. Yes. Yeah. Big old three-story brick building, and it had a tunnel underneath the street. It went into the high school. Yeah, yeah. the new yeah. high school, which is City Hall now. But yeah, okay. Yeah, um, I've heard that tunnel is still there. It part of it is. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah it's, part of it's still there. Yeah. In fact, it, it maybe they reopened it. I don't know. They had it had it closed for a while, but yeah, we could. When I was in eighth, maybe seventh grade too, but eighth grade. We had shop classes, okay. industrial arts, you know, over to the high school, and we'd always go through the tunnel to get there. Was Elmer Arnd teaching some of those shop classes back then? Yes, he was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you start. You, his name starts with an A. That, yes. No. Okay. Elmer Arnd. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I, I can remember. I knew he was in the school system teaching industrial mm -hmm. arts and stuff a long time ago, and yeah. Oh, I can still remember quite a few of the names of the teachers. Rose Elliott was my homeroom teacher. She was also a math teacher. Cap Campbell was, was uh, he was athletic and he was a math teacher. Okay. And, oh my goodness, D Mrs. Disbro and, well, <laughs> God, so many teachers. But that's one thing, you know, after I got, Went to, when I, seventh grade, I went to Central. Well, we went to different rooms for different yeah. um, classes, and I wasn't used to that at all. No, you went to a one-room school. One room, and <laughs> well, when I went to Beardshire, that was, you. we did everything in one room. I yeah. mean, sixth grade had one room, fifth grade. But um, in seventh, 
I, I was really a minority because uh, I was the only in Beardshire and in, there weren't very many country kids okay. in, in, you know, in, in town school at that time. And I, I'm sure my clothes weren't very good because uh, mother was so sick. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, so I had to take care of my own clothes, and I had to do chores before I went to school and when I came home yep. with the cattle and stuff. So I, <laughs> I probably... Smelled like a cattle lot. <laughs> well, I probably could have because, you know... Me well, growing, you couldn't help it. <laughs> well, when I grew up, uh, I liked the farm. I loved the animals and farm work, but uh, I liked to hunt and fish, you know. And that was... The rest of this stuff didn't didn't mean anything to me, you know. <laughs> now, I've heard you telling stories before about how you used to go hunting with your dog. and Yeah, but I, I never took him. When I went hunting with Wes and George, um, Wes Slippy and George Zanker, I couldn't bring my dog because Wes had a dog. Yeah. And uh, so I'd always have to shut my dog and he'd, he'd feel bad. But anyway, yeah, that is uh, usually every Sunday. If, if this was Sunday and it was like this, we'd be hunting all day long. Yeah. And I, oh, I probably, let's see, I was probably 10 or 11 by then. But we, we had some good times, those two. You oh. also ate a few animals that people would rather shudder now to, than to eat. Well, it was a, a thing. They were... Uh, those old guys were, uh, if you shot it, you ate it. Okay. You know, you didn't shoot something just to shoot it like a lot of people do now. Well, I've heard you describing a raccoon and even a possum. Possum. Possum <laughs> was the first one. <laughs> people, uh, people would look at a possum. I don't think they would eat it nowadays. I can remember coming up that road, <laughs> going across, and I was so scared. Because I had seen Wes. And, you know, he was kind of scrubby looking. He, he wasn't a very big guy, but he, I was scared to death of him. I didn't know him. And Dad said, you go over there, you know. So I, all the way from, I carried that possum in a gunny sack. <laughs> Another, you know, going back to school, yeah. um, in the fall, uh, at least a couple of years, we would, uh, the teacher would ask us to bring feed sacks. Okay. A feed sack or two. And we'd start out from in the afternoons, and, uh, but right after dinner, after lunch, you know. Mm -hmm. We had our lunch at school. Carried our own lunch board. Carried but anyway, we'd go west on Bloomington and go north on Stagecoach. Yep. All the way around and around, and then end up on Dayton, and then back Dayton, and then back on Bloomington again. Okay. And the reason for the feed sack, we collected milkweed pods. Yes. Okay. For and they. Second during, World War. During World War Two, it was for the flyers uh, for. Uh, Made life jackets. That's yeah. exactly right. right. Yeah, right. and I can remember. Half of us would be on one side of the road, and half of us would be on the other in the ditches, picking them. Isn't that something? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's back when everybody joined in the war effort. <laughs> I was going to bring a thing that I found oh, a few years ago, up by the old school off on the lane, and it's a just a copper, little copper tray. Yeah. But uh, we never had electricity. So uh, we had two lamps and never, ever, rarely, changed, uh, you know, lit the second one. We had just one kerosene lamp. Mm -hmm. It was pretty good size, but anyway, uh, but on Christmas Eve, we always had a play. And uh, This is in the school. Yeah, mm -hmm. and everybody in school had a part. Yeah. You did your part. And uh, the one of the fathers, whether it was dad or whoever, would go out and cut a tree for a Christmas tree. Sure. And uh, on Christmas Eve, just before the play, they'd light, they'd put candles on yeah. the street. And they'd light all those candles. <laughs> Why that thing didn't explode and burn the thing, yeah. you know. But it didn't. And I can remember these, these 
Some of them we made, I can remember, out of uh, can lids, can mm -hmm. bottoms, and they had a, like a spike up to them, and you, you stuck a candle on there. Yep, right. And there was, anyway, I found one, a copper one. Okay. I, that would land in the kind of in the driveway uh, oh, three, four years ago, and I thought, what the heck? And then I realized what it was. And that lid would catch the melting wax they yeah. off the burning and panel, right? the spike coming up through right. it. Now, I can't remember... Why they didn't burn the tree in the whole schoolhouse, I don't know. Yeah, because a lot of those trees were red cedars, you know. Yeah. I mean, just what they could cut out of the timbers. So. Yeah. <laughs> and then at night, when it was real cold, I remember Dad, he, they would, the neighbors would, the fathers would take turns going to the schoolhouse and add more coal. We burnt coal at night in okay. the old, the old uh, coal shed, which is down home. I drug it down home. It's down by my house, but it had uh, originally it had different bends in it. It had a, a bend. The big bend was for coal. You're right. And but it had a bend for cobs. Corn and cobs. It, yes. Yeah. And then it had a for wood. Yeah. And every morning, you took turns doing this, um, but the older boys, you would bring in a, a bucket full of cobs and put it in the old stove. It'd start the fire. <laughs> right. Well, yeah, there'd be coals in there, and then cobs would burn good, and then you then you add start adding wood, and you burnt wood during the daytime. Okay. But coal at night. But yeah. I guess that's what they call banking the fire so it would burn all light with coal. And, yeah. Yeah. All that old building. I remember um, in the seats, you know, and, and looking to the west. Um, everybody, everybody, the, the building set north and south. Yeah. So everybody faced the north. And that, right. The blackboards were on the north side. Right. Or on the north. But anyway, um, the west, there were three big windows. They were tall windows. And when the wind blew, it had uh, these old blinds you pulled down. Yeah. Well, if they were down a ways, they'd, they'd come out, you know, from the wind going through them windows. Oh, the, oh, oh. the snow blowing in. And, mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, uh, but you, you tell should. kids that nowadays they would, they don't believe you. But I wouldn't I wouldn't take anything for all my experiences. I really wouldn't. I mean, I, I people uh, like just before the I can remember the end of the depression and and before and during World War Two and everybody I don't think anybody had anything much. You know, you're right. Uh, but nobody cared because. Uh, Everybody was the same, and everybody, you could, you never locked your doors, yeah. you know, and you could go away uh, if you had to go away for the evening or something. Neighbors would come in and do your chores. If you milked your cows, they'd milk your cows, you know. Now, uh, well, I always have to laugh now when uh, schools close because they have two, three inches of snow. In fact, mm -hmm. when we walked to school, they always stayed open for somehow the school teacher would get there or. Well, see, the teacher lived at Ray Workman's house. Yep. Mm -hmm. And she washed. Now, um, <laughs> like Mrs. Davis, she had a car, but she had to leave it there. She couldn't drive to school. Right. And she had a, a place, you know, there, there was a teacher's, I don't know whether she had one room or two rooms upstairs, but she had her own stairway and everything. Yeah. She took. She ate her meals with the workmen's. And yeah, but the teachers would walk to school. The students mm -hmm. would walk to school and would have school. <laughs> yeah, I can remember when it got so deep. We had an old, old mare uh, draft horse called Molly, and she was a dapple gray, huge old horse, and real. She was real heavy. Yeah. So I had to sit way up on her neck. Yeah. So I could, your legs, you know. But uh, Dad had said, "You go out and get Molly." And I never put a, I didn't have a bridle for her, just the halter. Yep. yep. And uh, you go out and get Molly and take off, and you get as many kids. And so I would go around, and, and of course you couldn't, you had to get by a fence or something to get on her because she was big, yeah. you know. 
<laughs> but uh, I'd get like uh, maybe two or three kids behind me, and then they'd hang on to her tail, some kids would yeah. hang, and she'd break the trail to school. Uh, years ago, it, the snow got so deep that uh, when it froze hard and, and drifted around the fences, cattle would even walk over oh, the fences. Yes, I know, but th that horse, that was a school bus back then. You well, hang on to the mane and the others were hanging on to the tail. Yeah, and if Dad didn't come and get her, uh, a lot of times he kept kept hay there, but you know, and... Uh, but they always knew their way home. Oh, The horses would always find home for you. We didn't, he didn't work her anymore, but she yeah. knew that's what she was yeah. to do. Yeah. Yeah, the real, yeah. The only thing, I used to have a wooden box, and the box stalls, we had four box stalls, and uh, two horses to a box stall, and I had a wooden box, and I would go out and start harnessing the teams, you know. Mm -hmm. And I drag that box up, and then I could pull the harness up over the hind end, you know. And uh, but you had to know <laughs> if you got in between them, they would they would just kind of and there you would be. You, I mean, they'd you could move. You. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and a lot of times we uh, we didn't wear shoes in the summertime. They step on your feet. Yeah, and they. They'd move their foot and put their foot on your head, but they wouldn't step real. I mean, they could have crushed your foot, yeah. you know, but they didn't. You know, they would they would put enough weight on you could move them. Just like they're playing around. With. Yeah, I I can remember. Not many of them had horseshoes on back oh, then. Oh no, either. no, none of Dad's horses that I can remember. We had a lot of horseshoes around, but um, we didn't. They didn't get out on the road much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned the cinder roads. I think the local power plant from Ames provided mm -hmm. the cinders, and then the my dad used to get a lot of uh, cinders from the Ames power plant. Right, mm -hmm. and he put it in the hog lot. Yes, and the hogs would eat them cinders, but they uh, some you know they chew on them. But if you put cinders down, you wouldn't get any uh, like uh, foot rot or anything. Sure, sure, yeah. Yeah, uh, in fact, if you dig around out behind where the big barn was, where the lots were, if you dug down, you'd find cinders. You'd find cinders, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's amazing what people used to do and you wouldn't think of it now. Yeah. No, well, they came up with ideas that, you know, you, you had to, if you were going to survive, you had to, you know, think of things that would do, you know. Yeah. God, it was... But, uh, like I said, I, as I remember back, Dad would send me into town twice a week with a flare box full of oats. Oh, sure. To grind for the hogs. And, and they went into the Ames elevator, which was right on Duff and right across the tracks. And uh, they'd put uh, molasses, grind the oats, put molasses and mineral in for the hogs. And I started doing that when I was eight years old with that old CC case. Was that what became the Froning and Deputy yeah, elevator? Yeah, that's, that's right, it. Right there. Okay. Yeah. There was another elevator on Kellogg. That was Gilchrist. Okay. Okay. But Dad, we did a lot of business. With, Down by Main Street. Yeah, just on just Kellogg. south of Main Street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, across the tracks. Yeah. There was a fellow that had a uh, livestock place there that you could load onto the trains. His yeah. name was Reynolds. Okay. And we used to haul the, the cattle in and, and uh, put them on the train there to go to Chicago. Could you ride in the, in the same caboose? In the, oh, in the caboose and ride into Chicago. Yeah. I only it was able to talk that into it once. Okay. Because we, we would load the cattle or the hogs. We sent hogs too. Yeah. But uh, we'd send them and then Dad, we'd come home and we'd do the chores and stuff, and then uh, we'd go down and get and get on the train and the Pullman, which is a sleeper train, and uh, we in the morning we'd be we'd get into Chicago the same right. and this same time the cattle in where the hogs got there. I I can remember the first time that I uh, they had what you know the guys who worked on the train the porter. Yeah, he. Uh, that's the first colored man I ever saw, and outside of my geography books, you know. 
and I was scared to death. I can remember, I, he looked like he was 10 foot tall and had, a, <laughs> had black pants on and a white, op, a white top. Right. And um, I stood behind Dad and he would pull those bursts down. And I always like to sleep on the top. Okay. You know? But uh, yeah, but oh um, my God, I was scared of him. <laughs> Big man. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, well, I, the only pictures I ever saw of him uh, really was they had spares, you know. <laughs> but oh, guys. Dean, do you remember the flowers around the depot? I've seen pictures of of the depot that's still there now. The Ames Depot. The Ames mm -hmm. Depot, and they had such beautiful flowers. Oh, they had a garden, flower yes. garden. Yeah. And that was actually pictures of it that went nationwide, and they said, you know, this was one of the most beautiful depots. Yeah. And when, like, uh, I used to like to go down, um, if you're going eastbound, you went down, and there was, there, they filled it all in, but there was a tunnel underneath the tracks, and you came up the other side, yes. and you got on. On the train that went eastbound. Yeah. Eastbound, yeah, but the westbound, you know, you could get on right at the depot. Yeah. But, but, but. If you were going to Chicago or east, like you, you walk down these steps and to this tunnel and up the other side. And yep. Mm. That tunnel, I think, is still there. They it probably, probably well, I probably they, I think they filled it in, of course. They, okay. But I, I think it's still there. But just like in the school system, I heard mm -hmm. of that tunnel at the depot. Yeah. I think that was the Iowa State College horticulture people that did the gardens. I bet they did. Yeah. 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 yeah they. Yeah, it was, uh, the parking lot was on the north side of the depot, where they did that, but it's not, it nothing is. like it. It, it was, it, it didn't have concrete and stuff, and, but it seemed to me like, it seemed to me like I remember a lot of flowers, but they were in a circle, kind of. Well, I think you drove around that thing. Yeah, they had different patterns and stuff, big, big flower gardens. Union Pacific has given Ames Historical some money now to commemorate, uh, is it the 100th, 100th anniversary of Union Pacific coming through Ames, or really? the 150th, I don't know. So I think about next year uh, there'll be an exhibit that the museum will put together and in part features that uh, depot flower gardens and everything, or pictures of it and stuff, it'll be uh, kind of remembering way back when they first got started. What really gets me is Ames does not have a bus depot, but in, in the like uh, 50s, late 40s maybe it was built, they had a real nice bus depot. It was uh, uh, right at the west end of Main Street, where where the that Wells Fargo Bank is now. Okay, beautiful. They built a brand new building. You, it had a twenty four hour a day restaurant. Oh yes, really nice. And uh, the buses would come in on the west side. It was a very nice building. And um, guys, they don't have anything like that now. And why? I can't understand why that. Is, you know, you would think with the uh, with the university and or, or just the way um, a lot of people travel, you know, they would have a nice bus. bus. Everybody's driving their own car right now, but pretty soon fuel will get expensive. That's, exact, that's exactly right. They'll go back to buses and trains and so on. Yeah. If I don't know if you do much shopping at Hy-Vee, but if whenever you do, look at the bottom of your receipt. Now it's three cents. Oh, on a gallon of gas. Yeah. 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 But Monty, the guy that runs, he's in charge of the gas station too. And I don't know, there isn't any special day, but he he will get ten. If most I've seen is twelve cents. I've seen eight. Yeah. Yeah. But he he, he determines what the what the, it's going to be that day. But they won't. If it's more than three cents, they won't advertise it by the store, you know. But if you, whenever you buy anything, it doesn't make any difference if you spend a nickel. I know, yeah. If you've got a receipt, it'll say like three cents. But the most I've seen is 12 cents. And 
I'm, with the price of gas. Yeah, and, people filling up a 25 gallon gas tank, it's going to make a couple of dollars a day. Oh, yeah. Day. Yeah. And when gasoline gets to be five dollars a gallon, they'll really wonder. <laughs> but, yeah. uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm sure glad that when I worked, I worked a lot in Des Moines mm -hmm. many years for, um, if there wasn't any work to do in Ames or right around this area, then I would go to the shop and work in Des Moines. Mm -hmm. And I always ate at Bishop's if I could. They had okay. a real nice deli. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. a very good food. Bishop's going to be here, you know, where Cubs is. In March, they're going to open in March. Where's Dolls? Dolls. Dolls is coming in. Yes, I, that's, you're exactly right. Dolls. I didn't mean Bishop. Well, Bishop. I was Bishop eight. was in Des Moines too. Yeah, right? and you could eat it. Yeah, you know, when you went to uh, yeah. Merle Hay, you could eat at Bishop's. No, you're right. Dolls. I'm sorry. But I used to eat a lot of dolls at the grocery stores in the morning, yeah. and it was really good food. So I'm, I'm glad they're coming. I mean, I, I ate at Hy-Vee every day. I haven't been there today, but I'm going tonight. Are you going down tonight? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't think so. Spaghetti. Oh. One dollar. All you can eat, all you can wow. eat for, uh, and uh, all the spaghetti you can eat, and all the uh, bread. Uh, garlic bread. Garlic yeah. bread you can eat. One dollar. Here we go. <laughs> well, I mean, you know. Up for, for today, Dean, and I want to thank you very much on behalf of Ames Historical Society. Well, and this is the 26th of January, 2011. And if we have more questions, I hope you'll let us come back and sit down with you. Oh, again. I enjoyed it. I, I like to talk to people about, about the area. Yeah, you, my you place. tell a good story. <laughs> well... Um, it's all the truth. Well, and, and we all It's like around. talking to the kids that come down when the old school was still standing a little bit, and I, the fourth graders, okay, and they look at me like, are you crazy? And a lot of the <laughs> stuff I tell them about, you know, and drinking out of the same cup, you know, and so on. Since we live in the same neighborhood, you were known as a local historian for this <laughs> whole area. Yeah, you, we got the memories, so I think we'll quit here for now then, and, uh, I'll insert a few of these images into the thing to put this all together for Ames Historical. And uh, thank you very much, Dean. Oh, you're welcome. Okay. Yeah, thank you.